In Creo Parametric 10.0, there have been some enhancements to the definition of materials to support the new composites design and manufacturing functionality. Here I am in a part model. To get to my materials, I can right click on the top node of the model tree and choose Edit Materials. And first off, let me close the old Creo 7.0 message about multi body modeling. There is a new folder of some composite materials that have been provided for you, but PTC recommends that you don't actually use these materials for production values. They're to help you get familiar with the functionality. So for example, when I go into the core materials folder, we have some various materials for Arex and Baltec and Core Cell. I'm not going to try to pronounce that one and Roja Cell. I'm going to go back to the composite materials folder. Besides core materials, we also have some different ply materials that are in here. And you can read the description and the various different values for your Young's modulus, shear modulus, and so on. For example, here's another one in here. So again, there are some materials that are defined for you, but most likely you are going to create your own materials. When we go to create a brand new material, new solid material, this dialog box is pretty much the same as before in Creo Parametric 9.0 and earlier regarding the different tabs. There is a new composite tab, but everything on the structural tab is the same. From the symmetry drop down list, you do have the ability to define orthotropic and transversely isotropic materials like before. That's how you would simulate composite materials in the past. But again, we have a new composite tab where you can enter in all this different information. And to explain this, I'm going to jump over to some slides. All right, let's talk about the different properties in this tab. First off, there is a field if you want to write in the specification. Then you have a drop down list for the architecture. You have four different choices unidirectional, stitched, woven, or core. And then you have the constituent fiber angles. I'm going to talk more about that on the next slide. Then you have fields for the single ply thickness for the cured and uncured ply. The next three options are used in the draping analysis. You can specify the roll width, and that way if your flat pattern is wider than the roll width, you will get a warning. You can also specify the worn angle and the limit angle. The limit angle is for the maximum amount of acceptable deformation during the draping analysis based on the shear. You can also specify a worn angle. And if you're unsure what to use for the worn angle, it's recommended that you can use half of the limit angle. Then you have a mass per area that's used in the mass properties calculations. The nice thing about that is it helps enable calculating the mass properties without having a solid generated. You can just do it based on the ply that is defined. And then there is a cost per area. I am a little confused about how to use this simply because there is no field that you can display in the composites module to display the cost of that particular ply. But I suppose you could use the parameter for that property in conjunction with the calculated area in order to figure out the cost. Let's talk more about that constituent fiber angles field. When you go to define a ply, you select your material and then there is a drop down list for the orientation. The constituent fiber angles for a given material will specify the predefined values for those orientation angles, but you could choose a value that is not in the list. And when you go to define the constituent fiber angles in the materials dialog box, it's going to open up the parameter properties dialog box. This is the regular parameter properties dialog box, but you're going to use the list series tab, which most people have never used. It's just that you can have a parameter with multiple different values, which is kind of neat. One other thing to be aware of for the fiber angles and also any of the other different properties that involve angles like the worn or the limit. There is a configuration option. I'm not going to read it for you uh, where you can specify the default angular unit. 
whether that should be degrees or radians. So that is the new composite tab. Let me show you a quick example of this. I'll have another video where I go into materials in more detail, but let me cancel out of there. And for my model, let's add a few of these different materials in here. I'm just going to double click a few of the different values in order to add them to the model. Let me go back to the core materials folder. Let me click a couple of those in order to add them. So now I've got a nice big list in here. I'll click the OK button. I have a composite feature that I started. I will edit definition and I've already defined a rosette and the layout surface. If I go to edit materials, well, this is another place where you can add the materials in for your composite feature, but I will cancel out of here. If you go to create a manual apply, let's say that I select one of my different materials. Let, let me grab this one over here can go to the drop down list. You can see that there are a bunch of predefined values that comes from that constituent fiber angles field in the material definition dialog box. But anyhow, those are the updates to the material definition in Creo Parametric 10.0 for composite design.